And now, Freelance Heroism. Hey everybody, welcome to Freelance Heroism. My name is Dees. And I'm Rachel. And before we even get started, I just want to take a second to say thank you to everyone out there who donates at the Patreon, in particular those who donate at the producer tier. Mm -hmm. Rachel. Yes. Would you like to let us know who they are? I would love to. Uh, We want to say thank you to Duncan, Nate, Breakmeister, Rebecca, Orient underscore Tiger, and Chris Stones. Thank you so much, you guys. Woo! You motherfuckers are killing it out there. (laughs) Killing it. Taking it up, and I am so low energy right now. I'm trying. (laughs) I I really do appreciate all the donations and the support. You Mm -hmm. help us make a better show for everyone. But I've been streaming and talking on the fucking microphone so much in the last day. Yeah. <laughs> so I I'm I've you ever do something so much you've removed yourself from it from the moment and you're like watching yourself do it? Yes. Oh, that's what I feel like right now. I'm like that was corny. No one's oh, going to no. like that. No one's going to like what you just said, you idiot. You dummy. That's not true. <laughs> Everyone's going to hate you. You sound like an idiot. Why don't you go eat more pizza, fat boy? <laughs> that's, what I, that's what I feel like right now. Uh, oh. Oh, sorry. Right. Oh, sorry. I just wanted to lean into that depression for a moment. Oh, no. Get, just let it wash over me like a wave. <laughs> All right. So I just I just showed you something my friend sent me. That was uh-huh. the Sandman trailer. The first look at Sandman. Yes. Uh, from Neil Gaiman. Mm-hmm. And you said, uh, open, open, for, open <laughs> quotation mark. Uh, I said, well, okay, I, I've read a few things by Neil Gaiman, and I haven't really been a fan. Right. Um, however, I have read uh, a number of the Sandman comics, and that was the only thing by him that I have enjoyed. Oh, okay, cool. So, uh, I'm interested to to watch it um, close quotation mark <laughs> yes very nice i feel like all like all of my friends who know that i don't like neil gaiman yeah every time they bring him up they sort of do it in like an apologetic way <laughs> i know it's because you because you're fiery against him <laughs> i mean it's whatever i mean like i wasn't i wasn't a huge stephen king person like i, I knew a uh-huh. couple of the like more classic movies that he had done so like misery and uh cujo i knew that one mm-hmm. uh shawshank redemption i think green mile green mile like um those are the those are the ones i knew yeah. right and i had seen those a million times and and all that mm-hmm. um but it's the little stuff it's the un- it's the stuff that's not mainstream that's really good yeah do <laughs> so you know what i mean yeah what was that uh mr mercedes Fan fucking tastic, so mm-hmm. good. Yeah, that one is really good. And the Outsider, which by the way is canceled. That's sad. Yeah, that show was great. That was. Really I love that. Um, even that what was that that like kind of WB teenage <laughs> one that we watched, The Mist. Oh yeah, <laughs> that one was good too. One. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, yeah, Stephen King's killing it out here. Yeah, I thought he was. He does a good job. Mm-hmm. I, I like a lot of the stuff he makes, and which is surprising. I'm not trying to like be pandersome or anything, but I just didn't realize he was that good. Right. <laughs> but he is. It's pretty good. I don't like. I don't. I don't mind that people like Neil Gaiman. Like, I'm not like, oh, you have bad taste. Like, right. I understand that they're like the sort of wheelhouse that he's in has an appeal to yeah. like a certain demographic. I'm just not in that demographic. <laughs> so okay. when I see it. Because I read a few of his books, and I read like a lot. I think I read actually a lot of the Sandman comics because I, uh, my library had like the big, like huge bound volumes. Yeah. And I read quite a few of those. Um, but it's just something about like his, his books that I just, just kind of like rubs me the wrong way, and I just don't, oh. I don't like them. Okay. Well, fair enough. I mean, no one can make you like something. So, I just—I was just saying they got yeah. sent that trailer, and I sent it to you. There's—I mean, it's been a trailery day today because I got—I saw the theme song to the new, um, 
uh, Cowboy Bebop. Oh, I haven't watched that yet. Yeah, I posted it on my wall and I put it in the group, but it's really good. That uh, the opening theme song. Yeah. It's got the music by Yoko Kano and it's got kind of the same vibe. It's the theme song Tank. Anyone who's you probably all know what the fuck I'm talking about. It's not, it's perfect. It's good. It's like a it's like they took a comic or a cartoon style and turned it into a TV show that replicates it very heavily. Mm-hmm. It's interesting. Okay. So here's the thing. We've been watching Shameless uh on and off. Yeah? Yes. But today we're we're switching. We're gonna do something else. That's right. We're watching what are we watching? Midnight Mass. Midnight Mass. It's a show about churches mm-hmm. and about the loving God. <laughs> about loving loving the Lord. It's by uh Mike Flanagan, who has directed uh a few Stephen King adaptations. And and also the House Hill. And Hill, also Hill Hilly Dirt House. Hill House Fancy Victorian. Bly Manor. He also murder. directed um a horror movie called Oculus. And it was actually pretty creepy. It was about a haunted mirror. Hmm. That's the one with uh what's her name in it? Um uh cute redhead. Oh, from Doctor Who? Karen Gillan, yeah. Yes, yeah, she's Amy. in Amy. Oh Amy. <laughs> I love Amy. Oh no! I wish you were my companion. <laughs> uh, but no. So so, yeah. So I mean, so we're gonna watch that tonight, which is gonna be fun, mm-hmm. I think. Yeah. But on October first is the thing that you promised you'd watch that I am going to call in like immediately, and we have to watch all of it. I don't remember. You promised already. Did I? Yeah. I don't you remember. Don't I don't. Uh-huh gonna be surprising i'm you, sorry i had a i had it's a, a very classic busy day today one of the best tv comedies of all time oh Probably the best. oh is this uh seinfeld it is seinfeld okay and you know why you need to watch it why because it's culturally relevant you ass you have to watch <laughs> it otherwise people are gonna make jokes when i say no soup for you do you know what the hell i'm talking about there's a soup episode yeah it's called the soup nazi okay and he, he's a jackass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there are so many good episodes of that show. I mean, it's 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 hard to explain. Like comedy is always funnier when situations kind of cross pollinate, right? When mm-hmm. when things come together. And in this show, it's Larry David's maybe like the smartest writer in the history of comedy writing, right? And the reason is because he can write five or six different plots. All in the same episode that are things that you are like kind of identify with or think are silly or whatever uh-huh. like you can you can get into each one of them equally like invested in them and you're like you know because in every other episode they do it all of them will come together at the end and you're just sitting there like how the fuck is this gonna work <laughs> and he does it every time it's amazing he's so good at it okay He's so good at it. Like, you'll think, how the fuck could Neil Steinbrenner from the Yankees have anything to do <laughs> with a fucking guy dressed in wet clothes with fucking pants full of change buying <laughs> or trying to pay somebody to put his wet clothes in the pizza oven? How could that possibly merge? And it merges perfect at the end. So good. He's he's fantastic. Okay, I want to I want to see I want to see that. Oh, it's I so good. See how someone can do that. It's amazing. You're gonna like I I'm not trying to hype it up too much, but it's literally like one of my favorite shows of all time because it's so good. It's so good at doing that that you'll kind of get lost. The characters are great. Everyone's shitty. Nobody's okay. redeemable, really. Okay. Uh, for those for everyone knows Seinfeld, but you apparently. But you ever met somebody who's like overly picky about relationships? Yeah. Like, they're like, I don't like her because she flits her hair weird. Like when she, whenever she's sitting there and her hair gets in her eye, she goes and blows it out of her face. And I hate that. Right. Mm -hmm. They make it into like an art form of nitpicking every single person they interact with. Oh, okay. And it's this one lady has big hands. Her hands are too big. And he says, she has man hands. <laughs> <laughs> and 
It's just so good. I don't know. You want to watch it. It's so good. Okay. I'm excited for it. I've been waiting for like two years for them to put it on Netflix. And I'm excited. What uh wasn't there another show you wanted to watch? Or is this the one Midnight Mass? Um, this is one I've I've wanted to watch for a while. I think I told you like a month before it finally yeah. came out. I was like, I want to watch this. It comes out on this day. But I totally forgot about it. And then I saw a trailer of the show <laughs> called Midnight Mass and sent it to you. I'm like, we should watch this after you know. <laughs> After we watch that thing you want to watch. Yeah. Well, it turns out it worked out well. Yep. <laughs> anyway. So, yeah. So, I'm yeah. excited. Good. Well, this is actually about 10 minutes. So, do you want to go ahead and go to the uh, episode of this week? Yeah, hey, you just want to stop talking to me. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Go to the episode. Why don't you tell them what the title is? So this is um, a continuation of our Candle Keepers series. Right on. I there's a part in this episode I I thought about editing out, but then I Uh-oh. realized it would be like a really big chunk, and so I just kept it in. And so okay. there's sort of a moment where we all kind of go out of character because I'm confused about what you guys aren't doing. <laughs> Oh, okay. Oh, you left that in. Yes. I know exactly what you're talking about. I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. I was blindsided by it. I was completely, it was on me. It's my fault. Well, completely my, I, my bad. I look like an idiot, but my bad. I mean, it, we are all playing like online. So I think they're, you know, th- things can sort of get lost when everybody's online rather than if we were all at a table together. I feel like I just didn't hear anybody specify (laughs) a particular thing. And because it wasn't specified, it just did not occur to me at all. I just, Uh which is, you know, (laughs) hey, that's how it goes. And maybe also because, like, in this game, you guys play as librarians. Uh, But the thing is, I am in real life a librarian. So Uh maybe, like, I can sort of visualize the setting and like the resources that that your characters would have very easily no i i'm i know specifically <laughs> the thing that i did not was not aware of because as soon as it was mentioned out loud i was like what <laughs> and then it made sense okay well in any case i guess we'll we'll go ahead and go to this episode yeah uh this is candle keepers chapter two Sorry about this, guys. (laughs) Sorry about the delay. Um, these Vistani, you Uh said they're nomadic in nature? Yes. They don't take well to outsiders or guests, I'm Um, assuming? It it really depends. Uh, You certainly need to to treat them with respect i mean they were given their gift um if if you would call it a gift uh as a boon of their kindness towards strangers Um, now is this gift as in a gift in common or gift as in germanic as the word poison uh i would say the second one Hmm. Hmm. well this is becoming a little disheartening i'll be honest Well, it has been given to us to seek them. There are seek them, we people. must. If there are two more librarians we could talk to. Maybe they know something. Yeah, we can get an update on that horse. Thank you so much for your time. You're welcome. He's going to go back up the, the ladder. You guys validate parking? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I smoke everywhere I go, by the way. Uh-huh. Without, without asking <laughs> i just do it so if anyone ever needs me to put a, assume i always have one on me okay um and if anyone ever needs me to put it out just just ask okay okay well the... i want that visual to be stuck in everyone's head okay in this time period generally people don't have a problem with smoking mm-hmm. uh, yeah they, they even let their kids and babies do it <laughs> so you get the spine strong yeah there are um, magical words in Candlekeep, so 
um, flames larger than a candle um, are like automatically suppressed unless it's like a, a specific magical fireplace. So no one's like worried about you setting the books on fire. Right. The only thing he's setting on fire is his lungs. <laughs> All right. <laughs> as as we're as we're leaving, going mm-hmm. to uh, to eat to the next librarian, uh-huh. uh, Mister 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 Montero, what does nomadic mean? It means they don't get angry at you, kid. Hmm. Well, does they that travel? Mean... They they don't stay in one place too long. Oh, okay. There is no home for them. They are forever adrift. Oh, well, okay. I another way to say it would be they move, but you know I. I get that that would be less depressing, maybe. <laughs> okay. But what is depression yet in another state of looking? I I I thought maybe I thought maybe you were madic, Mr. Montero, since you don't smile. <laughs> but nah, he's just a dick. <laughs> <laughs> Keep chopping fronts of that word off until we get to the to the crux of it. Words. All right, hot topic. Let's get going. Words have no power to impress the mind without exquisite horror of the reality. <laughs> I'm gonna point and be like, "Hot topic is pet smart to keep me company." Fantastic. <laughs> All right, so we're, I guess we'll move to the second person. Okay, that is uh, Silvira. She is an expert in the Great Wheel of the Plains. Fantastic. Uh, oh, goody. So you guys can find her. Uh, she's in a different tower. Um, on the the top level, there's a uh, the top of the, this tower is um, domed like an observatory, uh, oh. and there's like a big giant painting on the ceiling of it, and she's there studying it. I I know you said Silvira, but yes. in my head I'm thinking Elvira, <laughs> and that's how I'm visualizing her now. <laughs> and there's nothing you can do to change that. And when you're like, there's a big dome, and I'm like, is it sitting right next to another one? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, and she is a tiefling. So you're saying she's horny. Okay. <laughs> uh... Ma'am. Yes. How are you doing today? I'm working on... Um some research and i'm being interrupted how are you doing i'm doing great you're slowing down the interruption <laughs> i would like to ask you some questions uh on your field of expertise you have a moment uh let me stop so. you there if you don't have a moment <laughs> please take a moment uh-huh all right how can i help you i'm gonna put out a cigarette and then light <laughs> one up with it <laughs> all right uh we're looking for the vistani we were told that they travel planes we hear that you're the foremost expert on planes. I am. Maybe you could tell us uh, which plane they hail from. Uh, I'm not too well versed on the Vistani. You'd probably want to talk to uh, Scrivenbark for that. We already talked to him. Well, the I do know that the Vistani, um, well, they don't have a specific plane that they call home. They are frequently associated with the Shadowfell. How did we get to the Shadowfell? Well, um... Unless you had a, uh, a specific spell for traveling to a different plane, your best bet would be to find a shadow crossing. Found one. I point to the floor where my shadow is crossing <laughs> with Mr. Montero's. Uh, not, not quite. Um... That sounds horribly delightful. <laughs> Found Double. another one. Double There's shadows. one on the wall. I see shadows crossing all over the place, Miss Silvira. Yonk, you must look deeper into them to see the truth. And I just get this thousand yard stare as I focus on where two shadows are crossing on the floor. <laughs> and that's where I stay for the remainder of this conversation. <laughs> uh, so a, a shadow crossing. Um, is a place where uh, the, the, the barrier between our plane and the Shadowfell is, is thin. Typically for, for it to occur, it has to be a location um, 
where perhaps something horrible happened. Um, perhaps there were, were souls in, uh, in great pain or misery. Well, I feel like there might be one here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to look at him staring at the shadows and be like, everywhere I go, I am in pain and misery. Uh, perhaps a, a location like a, a battlefield or a, a graveyard or a tomb. Um, those are typically where you would find a shadow crossing. Are you aware of any? Uh, none nearby. Um, I, I don't break my gaze from the floor, but I go, Miss Silvira, w- would mm-hmm. would like where a lady fell off a horse? Would would that be a <laughs> terrible place? Um, no, that wouldn't be terrible enough to create a, a shadow crossing. She'd have to fall off at least thirty horses. <laughs> <laughs> She'd have to fall off a Mustang, probably. <laughs> Uh, but if uh, they're they're rare, especially for the the shadow fell. Um, but if you do find a location, uh, I would, especially when nearby, I would be very interested in uh, in studying it. Hmm. If we were to find a shadow fell, uh-huh. uh, a shadow crossing. Yes. How dangerous would it be on the other side? Uh, well, the Shadowfell can be quite dangerous. I mean, the, not everything there is uh, is is going to be life threatening, but I would say that most things are. Um, some people do willingly go to the Shadowfell uh, to study necromantic magic. Um, very, I, I mean, it's it's there are cities ruled by the dead in the Shadowfell. Uh, there are creatures that are, um, you know, horrific emotion made flesh that that wander the place. It's it's sort of a uh, a a black and white mirror of of this world. So it would look similar um, once you cross through uh, the place of the Shadowfell. You you came out uh, would look similar to where you had entered it. Um, but it would be it would be gloomier. It would be misty. It would be, you know, the only colors would be would be gray and black and white. Fantastic! I gotta <laughs> go there. I'm gonna I'm gonna look at uh, at him, uh, at uh, Yonk, and be mm-hmm. like, "We're gonna have to crash a bunch of horses <laughs> in order to make a situation <laughs> terrible for, enough for us to get to the shadow." Oh, yeah. I don't want to hurt hurt any horses. You won't have to. You can just stand on the ground and watch. Keep count. I think 40, 50 should do it. <laughs> you see, you see Yon getting visibly upset. Um we just march him right off a cliff. Hit the ground like a <laughs> may I do a history check on the Dillons? Sure. All right. Just hit the ground like a machine gun. Like perfect. This will work perfectly. Nineteen. And what were you? What were you checking again, David? Uh, what I have known about the reason it's called Scardale. Uh, I don't think I know Scardale. In the Dale Lands, there is a giant cataclysm that caused Scardale to be called Scardale in the Dale Lands. Oh, okay. Which um, would possibly bring enough pain and suffering to cause such a rift. Then yes, but, you, you would. Um, although just, that's not that's not anywhere near uh, okay. where you guys are. Well, actually, Lady Savara. Yes. Would you know of a place with such? A presence that possibly may have a rift of this nature that we would be able to expose? Uh, nowhere nearby. Uh, it's possible that there could be something. Um, but I mean, pl- places that um, shadow crossings are created are often places that people don't like to visit. So they don't, they don't find them. Off to Delaware. <laughs> I look at my two companions. I don't think anything is large enough to scare him. And 
with the way he treats his lungs, I don't see how he's scared of anything else. Oh, was that directed towards me? I'm sorry. I couldn't <laughs> understand. I was in flavor country. Well, if, uh, if the three of you in your research do find um, such a location, especially one nearby, uh, like I said, I would be very interested in, uh, in, in studying it. Always willing to share this pain and suffering we find. <laughs> She just kind of nods and looks at the 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 other two. <laughs> Look, you can pan across the room, but I'm your only option, lady. <laughs> uh, anything else? Nope. I think that's fine. Thank you so much. Mm, thanks. Appreciate it. I'm gonna put out a smoke and light another one. What's next, boys? The last one that we know of. The one that knows abominations in the far realm. Right, right. That would be Vizier Og. Uh, he is a Githzerai. Uh And we'll say it takes you guys a little bit uh, to find him. Um, so at this point, it's probably early afternoon. And um, we'll say he he's not doing any research. He's having lunch. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, uh, you guys have found um, uh, Zir Ag, the Githzerai expert in all things unnatural. Uh, he is trying to enjoy his lunch. And he sees the three of you approach, and you just kind of... <sighs> it's okay. I have that when I see myself in the mirror every morning. Same feeling. Not to be too rude or anything but i don't mm -hmm. think that the visual of us is going to interrupt the flavor that you're tasting on your food uh, i don't know about that how can i, I help you i do i'm <laughs> i'm pretty certain that the two aren't connected how can i help you we're looking for a way to get to Shadowfell. we heard about shadow crossings would you know anything about those mm, i know a bit about them um they're uh, the the best way to get to the Shadowfell. Uh, there's not any around here, though. What's another way to get there? Uh, maybe if you had a, a spell to go to another plane. What is this guy's specialization again? We, we got sidetracked for a minute. Sorry. All things unnatural, including aberrations, undead, and the far realm. We're looking for a place where the Vistani, you know the Vistani? Vaguely. We hear that they, uh, they're nomadic and they transition between realms. Yes. Right. Yeah, they're, um, they're able to do that without any I mean, it's it doesn't seem to be a traditional uh, plane transfer spell. Are there any Vistani that you know of around here? I don't that know might any. Be able to do that? I don't know any Vistani. Hmm. Do you know Where? anyone that would? <sighs> they travel a lot, so I'm. They don't really go to the cities. Um, I mean, you would have better luck finding them perhaps on the road or at a smaller town. You're more likely to encounter them in, in the wilderness. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Uh, pause the game for a minute. Am I missing something rather dramatic here? Just be honest. Am I missing something like entirely obvious that I just don't see? Because you right have, now you have a I map. Have... You're asking how to go somewhere, and you have a map. But you said that this was a map of it was in the book, right, where the person was taken. Uh huh. So how would we follow a map that is as descript as there's a bridge, there's some trees, there's a town labeled which way? Uh, there are land. Oh, is that is that a town? I thought I thought it was. Yeah, it's okay. a town. It says which way. There are like land structures labeled okay. the hand and the horn, three tree hill. Uh, there's some sort of mountain that has like smoke coming off of it. I thought These this are... was a, I thought we had established that this was from in that book, which was a description of where the lady. 
had fallen off a horse with the Vistani. So right, I assume but, she's already in the place where they were. But I also said that this map is the paper is different from the journal. The the handwriting okay, well, I, is different. She didn't make this map. This I map was added at a later point. My bad. I completely missed <laughs> that that part. I thought this was part of the book. No, it was just tucked in the book. Someone okay. someone put it in the book. So then we'll show the person the map and be like, hey, does the city make any sense? OK, I'm sorry. I didn't it's mean okay. to derail the game. I'm just like, at some point, I'm going to have to get a fucking clue here. Right. Because how the hell am I going to follow a map of a place we can't even get to? OK, it makes way more sense now. OK. All I'm right. Do, do any of us know where the fucking city is just offhandedly? You haven't heard of it, but you are in a library. We so can find a map to the there are, fucking yes, town. There, okay. there are maps. Jesus Christ. I. My my, I swear to God, I was just like, if we could just get anywhere into the region where this map is going to be helpful, I'm going to be able to find this place as a ranger. Like, just get me within a thousand miles of it I mean, on the same plane of existence, and guys, I'll get us there. Yeah. Through your through your questioning, you guys have gotten some really useful and pertinent information. Right. Yes. I was just very confused. That's why everyone was like, I want to look at some maps and figure out where this town is. Well, that, I thought, that's I thought that's what we were trying to do. Get to a place where the fucking map would be Nobody, relevant. That's but why you didn't well, want to yeah. show the map to anyone. We're that's why I, thought, I thought the map was for over there. I didn't want to give away <laughs> any clues because you were like, Do you show them the map? I'm like, why would I show them a map of a place they don't know how to get to? Yeah. Once he said I wasn't going to show him the map, I was like, well, it's not my place to reach in his pocket and grab it. No, yeah, but my, I, that's why I, I said what I said. Plus, I have an intelligence of nine, so I'm trying to play the character. Here. Okay. I'm so, no, I just, I misunderstood. No, one it's, okay. All good. It's, it's all okay. good. It's all good. Now it's all, all good. figuring out why there's no fucking clues here. I was like, uh, why am I going to show a map to a guy who doesn't know anything about the place where the map is located? All I'm doing is volunteering information that he's not going to be able to do anything with. I'm like, once we figure out how to get there, then the map will be useful to us. So just get us there somehow, find out how to get to the shadow place, and then we'll have a map, right? That's I swear to God what my thinking was. And I'm like, right. I cannot get this fire started no matter what. I thought you just didn't want to share or find and someone else didn't try to steal our research. That's what I was that's yeah. the reason I didn't show it to anybody. I was like, well, they're not gonna know what it is anyway. And me giving away information is never good. Right. <laughs> I don't want people following us or taking it from us or we're low level here having them be like, oh, that's important. We'll take that. I'll just, you know. I'll just write my name over your, all your research and take all the credit. I, my point, though, is that I thought this map was for another location. Now that I'm okay. aware that this is probably a map to the thing to get us to the other place, that makes way more sense. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's look up a fucking map then. <laughs> okay. All right. So uh, after you guys have talked to these different uh, great readers, uh, and you have gotten some really useful information, so this right. wasn't it wasn't mm -hmm. like pointless. Right. Um, you do have to go through the the archives and get some different maps to try to locate this area. Um, go ahead and give me. Uh, let's say you can do either like uh, nature survival. Um, history uh something like that to help kind of pinpoint either going by like um you know like oh these are pine trees 18. so we're gonna we're gonna 20, look in oh. like this specific area and 22 sorry 22 yeah. 19. 19 history uh the only thing i could uh add to that was a survival check of 17. excellent so through that, um, the three of you are able to, after a couple hours of research, uh, you find a map. It's an older map uh, that does have the village of Witchway on it. Um, in uh, more updated maps, uh, the village has been marked as being abandoned. So um, you know that this is, you know, this is sort of, uh, it's, and it's only we'll say three or four days travel from Candlekeep. Uh, but because the town was abandoned some time ago, uh, the the area that this is in is uh, not traveled very often. Um, and there are uh, the, the hand and horn are uh, different, like rocky, you know, like mountains that have like certain shapes to them. Um, right. And the Scorch of the Red Worm, uh, it seems to be related to a 
a hillside that some years in the past, a, uh, a dragon basically like flew over it and just set the whole hill on fire and just like burned everything on top of it. Yeah. Um, and then to the west of that, um, there is a, that seems to be uh, where this, this treasure is uh, leading you guys to, uh, where there's a, a drawing of a, um, a single house with some little ravens around it and a little arrow pointing at it. Looks very misty around that house. Uh, but yeah. Is that where you live, Mr. Graves? <laughs> why, do you, why do you think that every time you oh. find something like that has mist, oh. that you think that's me? Because it tends to follow you where you go? It doesn't follow me where I go. I smoke. You've seen <laughs> smoke before? Oh, You're yeah. a dragon. I'm sure you're aware of the... Yeah, but I'm not allowed to use it here in, in the library because I could burn down half of it. That's against the rules. Yeah, we wouldn't wouldn't want to break any rules. No. Nope. nope. Just, nope. I'm just no, staring just... at him with like a seething <laughs> anger. <laughs> All right. Do you know how to book passage? I'm looking at, at Yonk. Do I book? Is that when I put the books back on the shelf? <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. Why don't you get on that? Okay, but 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 Miss Aiden said I wasn't going to get my books back for a week. Why don't you think about what that means? Just really like internalize it. I'm going to turn around and be like, "It's going to be you and me most of the way." <laughs> okay, we've got some maps. We've got some direction. We need to find a way. What's the quickest way to get there? Do you think? Mm-hmm. Candle Keep should have a carriage or horses. It does have a a, a Smithian stables, um, and it's not it's not unusual for a a librarian to need to go on like a, a research trip. Right. Yonk, we're going on a field trip. Oh, boy. prepare your soul. We may not come back. Oh no! And we're all getting horses, so. <laughs> Who knows what might happen? A worried face. <laughs> and a... Don't fall off yours or break a leg, please. I, I, I don't want to fall off the horse, and I don't want my horse to turn into glue either. It's well, okay. Then ride it well. <laughs> okay, I, I'll, I'll, I'll ride it well. All horses go to heaven one day. Oh, well, that's, that's not true. <laughs> that's right. Some <laughs> he's lying to. You. Some some horses are absolute bastards. Mm. Well, I know that I'm supposed to get a special horse if I ever have to go ride one because the last time I got on one of the smaller horses, well, I'm not allowed. I'm not allowed to ride the smaller horses anymore. Right. Well, we'll get you a big old thing. You're riding small horses like me having dreams. They are both crushed. <laughs> <laughs> I got to get the fuck out of this room. All right. Is All there right. some sort of like smoky bar where a bitch is playing a piano or something? Can I go there? Yeah, you can go there. <laughs> all right. Hey, oh, let's, all, let's all meet up at a tavern that's nearby <laughs> where I can play a game of like cards with some people and okay. yeah. not have to worry about glue or fucking Can- Candle, Keeps, Candle Keeps Tavern is called The Hearth. It's actually like a few buildings down from the Smithy and Stables. I know they play cards here. They absolutely play cards here. <laughs> Then I will go get the horses while he plays cards. Okay. (laughs) Just envisioning Yonk riding in on a on a massive just just like Mongo and Blazing Saddles. Just (laughs) just as Clydesdale of a horse. All right. Uh D'Angelo, you are uh you have to fill out some forms. Um you know to to take the horses uh sort of a general you know how long do you expect to be gone how many do you need um horse forms yeah would you like the insurance on them i was just about to say do you take the damage waiver out on the horse or not <laughs> i'm gonna look where do i sign for the extended like, warranty absolutely i'd like the insurance <laughs> it's, just, it's just a racket <laughs> so you go through all that um they'll be ready for you in the morning 
um, since it is kind of late in the day at this point. You guys, have I been like a midsize. Yeah, running, mid-size. running around Candle Keep. They have to go assemble the horses for us. <laughs> we gotta vacuum them out before you get them. You, you, you assure me you have one that'll fit Yonk. Yeah, yeah, we've got um. <laughs> We're gonna t- tie two horses together. <laughs> <laughs> we got a we got a horse. It's part uh, it's part hippogriff. That one, that one's oh the yonk. God. That one's the yonk horse. Yeah, oh, we'll have, not... you have we'll have one ready for yonk. Well, then let's have a few drinks tonight. We'll go ahead and uh, head out first thing in the morning, and we'll stay up till dawn. What do you think, yonk? What do you say? You drink? Oh, yeah, everybody drinks. You, you have to stay hydrated, Mr. Graves. Right. Well, I've got a new flavor of water for you. It's called knock your ass on the ground. <laughs> and I'm you're gonna gotta be my treat. What do you say? Well you play cards? Uh I play go fish. Fantastic. You're gonna be a, a quick study. <laughs> and don't watch. worry, all your drinks are on me. <laughs> And I'll teach you how to play cards. <laughs> well, if all my drinks are on you, then how am I going to drink them? Oh, this is going to be fantastic. What about you? You a card player? No, but I enjoy the watch. Watching people lose the game is almost as fun. Well, you're about to have a fucking ball. <laughs> I thought we were going to play cards, Mr. Graves. We are going to We're going to watch people lose their heart and soul. He's going to have a ball and you're going to have a Big ball of yarn <laughs> to your name. All right, let's go. All right. So you guys spend the, the rest of the evening drinking and playing cards at the heart. I would like to discuss how much money uh, Yonk owes me <laughs> after this game. Uh, why don't the two of you give me... Uh... I've got a three-card Monty set uh, in my... Okay, I think those are intelligence checks. Stealth checks or a what? sleight of hand for card games, sleight of hand. I'm cheating him, is the point uh-huh. I'm making. I'm using a three so card. Monty it, set. So, is it a countered intelligence check against your sleight of hand? Yes, that has to be it. And god damn, Probably. that's gonna be brutal. Yeah, <laughs> all right. Okay, well, I have a three card money set. Do I get advantage <laughs> because it's literally made for tricking people? Uh, I think you get your proficiency. Okay. So just roll uh, slate of hand. So I just have to just add two to whatever it rolls here on the thing. Uh yeah. Uh wait, what? <laughs> oh. Nine total? <laughs> All right, Yonk. I've never wanted to roll high <laughs> more in my entire life. What'd you get? Suck it, Graves. <laughs> oh, no way. That was like I... psychologically damaging to me to be caught by him. That's a that is an 18 with a minus one intelligence. Oh, well, the queen's right there, Mr. Graves. See? I hold it up to him. What you think you're a fucking wise guy or something? That's not a queen. Well, that's a lady and it's got a Q on it. That's what they told me, Dive. This is a queen. Her name's Gwendolyn, damn it. <laughs> That's not a queen. She's barely a duchess. Did, did, did I win? <laughs> Definitely back in. Oh my God, look, a shiny thing. <laughs> <laughs> Can we get that strip on the road? <laughs> okay. All right. I, All I'm right. going gonna, gonna to pay for his drinks and I'm going to flick him a gold. Okay. Ooh, shiny. I mean, I meant I'm going to flip him a copper. <laughs> I'm going to polish shiny. up and flip him. <laughs> All right. So, uh, morning comes. You guys have your horses ready. Uh, As we're leaving, Mr. Graves, you're right. That was pleasurable. (laughs) I really enjoyed all the times I found that queen, Mr. Graves. That was a fun (laughs) game. I want to play it again. Oh, yeah. yeah, We should play it again. Let's play it (laughs) a statistically relevant number of times. (laughs) All right. How about we play for your horse? <laughs> we'll see what happens to it. Well, it's not my horse. It's the library's horse. 
Okay. All right. Graves, uh, you're the uh, the ranger here. Why don't you give me a survival check to see if you guys can uh, follow this map? Jesus fucking Christ, guys. Nice. <laughs> Eleven. I, okay. I do I do well with pictures. Okay, give me a survival check. <laughs> this is unfucking believable. <laughs> oh shit. How drunk was I last night? <laughs> oh god. Grace, oh. you just wake up and you're on the horse. You're like, what? What is going on? I kind of hold the map by like one corner each, and you see me like turn it this way and then turn it back this way, mm-hmm. and I'm looking around and I'm going. I I think we need to go this way. And I point off in a direction. All right. So... I don't know if it's the right direction. <laughs> you have to tell me because of my role, but um I, I do what I think is right. No. Um, I mean you as you guys travel, you do uh I mean you have pretty obvious um landmarks to to follow. Uh the town of Witchway is really just a small hamlet. Um all the buildings are have been, you know rotted and dilapidated at this point um there is still like a little bit of a road to follow but it is it is pretty overgrown um and it will take you guys a couple of days uh but you do eventually pass the uh the hand and horn three tree hill um there's a very creaky wood bridge that you have to Dawson's go over a river <laughs> by the one tree hill <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, but eventually, you guys make your way um, to uh, past the um, like this sort of uh, bald hill uh, where nothing has grows on it. Um, and beyond that, um, ahead you see a, uh, a stone chalet. Uh, it says Chalet Brantifax. Uh, it looks pretty run down. Um, we'll say at this point, it's probably like mid-afternoon uh you guys have been traveling on the road for uh, a few days at this point uh but you're approaching um let's see you're heading to the west uh so you can see the um the entrance to this uh three-story building uh it's made of a dark stone oh a chalet i thought you said it was a chalamet like a timothy a chalamet. Chalamet. <laughs> chalamet i was like no, no. way a stone timothy <laughs> chalamet interesting build yes um and there's quite a lot of uh ravens that are um sitting up on the 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 top of this building um, Brian, is that you <laughs> and to the to the south of the the building um there is a small uh pl- plot of land that has a a seven foot fence around it uh like a metal fence uh, and as you guys approach, you can see that um, the the wrought iron fence encloses what looks like a small graveyard with uh, the name Brantifax over the the um, entrance. We should check out the building. What do you think? What was the oh. name on the graveyard? Brantifax. Okay. Oh no, these birds kind of. They're staring me down. I don't like it. One of them They're... squawks at you. Mm. Do you speak crow? I don't think so. I'm going to look back up and go, 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 go. <laughs> you like, do? Yeah, I'm like, don't listen to them, pal. They, they don't know you as well as I do. Oh, oh okay. T- tell them I said hi. I look up and go, go. One of them goes, go. What what'd he say? He said, what's up? <laughs> I, I wave. I just sigh heavily. They speak that language, too. <laughs> <laughs> As a matter of fact, quotes the raven. <sighs> <laughs> All right. What are you guys doing? So there was a building, yeah? Yeah. How many doors? Uh, Just the one. Is it facing the graveyard or away from it? away from it how's the uh the build of the door and window frames are there windows uh there are windows um they all seem to be dark and a lot of them are 
uh, either very dirty or boarded up or uh, inside the building, the, the um, like shades have been drawn. Right. But they're not broken. They uh, are glass covered. Yeah. There's, there's a few of them that are broken, but probably not as many as you, you might expect. Right. The ones that are broken, quick mm-hmm. check. Uh, just looking outside. Mm-hmm. Is there glass outside or glass inside? Based on the break. Um, inside. The, so the glass fell inside? Yeah. Interesting. Um, it's, there's no signs of life outside or like anyone's been here for a while, right? Uh, I mean, there's a bunch of ravens sitting on the top of besides, the building. Besides the ravens. Um, give me a perception check. All right. I want to do that too. Is that okay? Cool? Yeah. Seven. Bunch of ravens. Seventeen. Mm. Finally, thank fucking god. Bunch of ravens. All right. Uh, I want to do an investigation check on the actual position of the ravens. That's cool. Okay. As a as a ranger who interacts with animals, I can be able to tell whether that's um a natural positioning for birds or if it looks like they're hosted by something like I don't know, say a shapeshifter or say a person that might um like have a familiar amongst the the crows. Okay. Nah, it's not very good. You, I mean, you can't really tell. Okay. What is the woodland like here? Um, there's a lot of old growth. Um, uh, the trees are pretty tall, so uh, there's not a lot of sunlight that comes through here. So foresty. Uh, yeah, foresty. It's kind of chilly. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to uh, so I walk up to the door. Okay. I'm going to knock on. I'm like, I'm gonna, before I knock on, I'm going to stop. And I'm going to look up to the birds. I'm like, you want to do this? Ah. You, have to, you have to speak to them in crow, Mr. Graves. <laughs> Never more. I'm going to knock on the door. Okay. Um, it like swings open just a little bit from the, the force of you knocking on it. Anyone home? There is no response. Call and reply. Callaghan man, milk delivery. <laughs> Boy, have I got a deal for you. I'm going to walk in. <laughs> like Maytag gives the appliances that'll keep you <laughs> through the summer. So you step in. Uh, this seems to be a, a cloak room. Um, you can see the, the door uh, from the inside. You can bar it, but it, it seems to have been left open and unlocked um rusty iron hooks line the walls of this entrance hanging from two of these hooks are a shovel and a rake a dusty cloak is draped over a hook next to a round topped door in the south wall um there is also a another door on the western wall straight ahead of you i'm going to take my finger and i'm going to drag it across the top of the flat surface of the shovel and the rake okay dust uh yeah there is okay cloak i assume as well uh there is dust on the cloak yes okay although we um uh when you like kind of touch it uh there's like a little bit of weight to it when it when it moves to the cloak yeah like maybe there's something in like a pocket okay well i'll check that in a minute actually i'm gonna look around the room I'm like, hey, uh, Yonk. Yeah, Mr. Graves. Will you take a look through this thing? Go through the pockets and whatnot. I got something I got to check on. Well, it's not mine. I'm not supposed to dig through things that aren't mine. You're right, but this might help us find the horse. Oh. (laughs) Conflict. Conflict. Moral dilemma. What will he decide? Find out next time on The Shadow. (laughs) Well. If it'll help find the horse, okay. Um, I reach in and... I have determined a pivot on this guy <laughs> so early. I, I, I reach in and um, look for whatever there is to find within this cloak. Okay. Yeah, it took Kavir two, three games in order to figure out how to, to manipulate 
fucking my teammates. <laughs> it took me fucking what? What is this? Hour two? <laughs> Did, didn't, yes. your, didn't your teammates the other game have an intelligence higher than nine, though? They did. Fair <laughs> enough. Yeah, there you go. So a couple moths fly out of the cloak, uh, but you find in one of the pockets a rusty iron key. Ooh, it's a, it's a key, Mr. Graves. I've already left the building. I, that's why I got you to look through it. Mr. Graves? Hmm. Um, I look at the... I look around the room... Uh huh. Um, there is many... a, a uh, door to the south and another door uh, directly across from you to the west. Do either of them have keyholes? Do they both have keyholes? Um, we'll say they both do. Hmm. I wonder if the horse is behind one of these. <laughs> door go... number one or <laughs> door number two. I go. I go to the door to the south and I put the key in and turn it. It does not fit. Oh, he's oh. not behind that one. I'll go to the other door. Before you open door number one. It does not fit. Never mind. I walk back outside. Um, mm -hmm. Mr. Graves, Mr. Montero, I found a key, but it doesn't seem to open any of the doors in the house. Did you check for a chest? Mm -hmm. If I remember right, the graveyard had a fence around it yes was there a gate on the fence uh yeah i look over at yonk and i actually smile for the first time all game <laughs> there's another <laughs> lock for it to not fit oh my god <laughs> i can really try excited. you may try the graveyard I, I'm excited until I hear the word graveyard. And then... <laughs> <laughs> why, why? Do you think the key opens the gate over there? Don't fear death. It's just another state of sleeping. <laughs> um, but when you usually you sleep, you wake up. Oh, well, okay. Dreams are just another state instead of the dreams. <laughs> Inception 2, coming this summer. <laughs> you know that look that dogs give you? Like when you say something and you think they're trying to comprehend and they tilt they their head like, a little bit yeah. to the right? Yeah. yeah. Imagine a dragonborn doing that right now. <laughs> I, um, I, I'll walk over to the, to the gate. Okay. Uh, the gate does not have a lock on it it's just like a latch and you would undo the latch to be able to walk in uh you can see that there are four um headstones but the um the engravings on them are so worn you'd have to uh get closer to read them <laughs> that's not <laughs> ominous at all <laughs> you'd have to get closer to the kill zone um i look back uh Mr. Montero, the key doesn't work over here either. The gate just opens and I swing it back and forth. Clang, clang, clang. <laughs> ah, that is uneventful. Oh, the key must go for something else. Hold on to it till we need it. You um, will beat our key keeper. Oh, boy. All right. Um, I kind of pat myself down looking for the safest place that I can store this key. Um and... Boy, have I got a solution for you. <laughs> <laughs> Please, God, don't swallow. Please, God, don't swallow. <laughs> That's not what I was thinking. Well, I don't have any pockets, and I don't have any... <laughs> oh, no. I, I no, I won't do it. Um, I, um, I, I, I guess I would have a, um, something within my adventures backpack. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I'll just store it in there. Okay. Um Yeah, I'll do that. And um one cursed key on Yonk. Okay. Oh. No. I'm kidding. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> Don't lie. Um but yeah, I'll I'll put it away in my in my backpack. Um mm -hmm. and uh I I guess I'll go back over to them because it doesn't really strike me as something that I would want to go read the gravestones, but I, I stepped outside and I'm walking up and down the side of the building and along uh, looking for posts where you might tie up a horse or where you might, um, you know, mm -hmm. 
Um, you don't see anything like that. Uh, the only thing really of note is that on the uh, sort of southwest side of the building, um, it's a tower, and it looks like on the second and third floor there was some sort of explosion uh, that's damaged some of the wall up there. Interesting. Can I get a look into it from where I'm standing outside? Uh, let's see. From the angle of it, all you can really see is like a bunch of broken wood. It looks like it's connected to the building, yeah? Yeah. Okay. All right, then I'm going to uh, to step inside. You're going back into the front? Yep. Okay. I'm going to walk over in the direction that the tower would be positioned from where I had oriented the room. Okay. Um, well, it's to the southwest. So uh, you have a door to the south or a door to the west. I guess uh, we'll just start with the west first. Okay. Uh, are you two following him? Of course. Okay. He said the key didn't fit, but there is a lock on the door, correct? Yes. And it was locked, or did he not attempt to open it? He just attempted to fit the key. Uh, he attempted to fit the key, and it did not fit. Okay, well, I'm going to attempt to open the door. It is unlocked. <laughs> Fantastic. Nice work. Uh, as you open this door, um, the three of you hear very faint uh, sort of coming from the uh, south of the house, uh, what sounds like a like a hog snorting. Um, but straight ahead of you, uh, you can see this room opens up to a den. Uh, light enters a spacious room through a bulge in the north wall where cracked and broken windows look out over a foggy veil. Dusty sheets cover most of the room's furnishings. Cobwebs stretch between the antlers, wolf heads, and other hunting trophies mounted on the walls above the wainscoting. A pale rectangle above the large fireplace suggests that a picture or mirror once hung there. Hmm. Um, so sort of stepping in, you can see to the south, there's a short flight of stairs that go up. Uh, and then next to that, there is um, an open doorway to a room where you heard the uh, weird noise. And then farther um, to the southwest, there's like a short hallway uh, and then probably it, it opens up into the, the tower that you saw before. I need to check on the noise first. Okay. Okay. So it's going to be the room to the south. Uh, that door is already open. So looking in, uh, you can see this is a kitchen. Uh, the ghostly scent of meals past still haunts this kitchen, forever trapped in the wood of its tables the soot in its hearth, and the grime in its pots, many of which hang from hooks about the room. Almost everything you would expect to see in a kitchen of this size can be found here, including dish-filled cupboards, cleaning supplies, and cooking utensils. Mice scurry across the floor, trying their best to avoid you. What's the snorting noise? Uh, there's nothing in there. You don't know. Perception? Sure. Was it the horse? 23. <laughs> There, I mean, the mice didn't make the noise, but there's nothing else in there that you can see that would, that would make that noise. You said that there's a lot of cooking material, kitchen stuff in here. Yes. I'm assuming there's bags of flour. Um. So you go in. Yeah. Okay. I need to yeah. look for the thing. Yeah. Uh, you go in, and yeah, there are like bags of flour, spices. Um. Kitchen look kept up, or it's not really clean, but. Uh, give me an investigation. Oh, good lord, my investigation is bad. Uh, well, you do you do notice that there is a um, like a, a stack of dishes in the sink, and they are dirty, but it seems like they they've recently been dirtied. Recently. Yes. I'm gonna reach my hand into one of the bags of flour. Okay. And I'm going to throw it across the room like like a. Like a mist. You throw flour on Yonk and D'Angelo. <laughs> you whip around and you throw it. <laughs> no, I throw it in the room I'm staring in. Well, I assume they they followed you in. Yeah, but they're not. I'm not going to throw it at them. I'm going to throw it into the open room to try to see if I hit anything that might not be. Visible. Okay. Uh, oh. I'm still in the room with the heads on the wall. 
I okay. wasn't going to chase down some weird ass noise in the house. <laughs> okay. Um, so the, the flower kind of like falls and settles on the floor. So that's how you do the mist. <laughs> yep. It's all bread. It's all just different stages of bread. Make sure so, pay attention to how I use the door next time. <laughs> uh, D'Angelo, uh, you are still in the, uh, the room with the hunting trophies. Um, there is a short flight of stairs that go up, and there's also a, a hallway towards the, uh, the tower in the southwest. Or you can just hang out in this room. As awesome as I find hanging out with other creatures of death, I continue <laughs> down to, to um, upstairs or down the, to the tower. It's up to you. Let's go down to the tower. Okay. So it's a short hallway. Um, as you walk down it, you do see a door to your left that goes into the kitchen. Um, but the tower itself opens up uh, into a dining room. Uh, the circular chamber at the base of the tower contains a large oak dining table surrounded by six high-backed chairs carved with images of stags. Suspended above the table is a gaudy chandelier tied off with ropes. Puddles of water on the flagstone floor are the result of moisture seeping in through three narrow broken windows evenly spaced around the tower wall. A fireplace set in the wall is blackened by soot. And mm. while you're sort of uh, looking around, uh, you hear the creaking of a door uh, on the floor above you. Can I hear them in the kitchen? Yes. I open up the kitchen door enough to um, see them and I look at them and I point to uh, I make enough motion to get Edgar's attention mm -hmm. and I point up uh, perception when he points up okay oh my god what the <laughs> fuck is wrong with me today <laughs> I, I, I don't think I've ever rolled this bad in my life. This is an unbelievable. I see the confused look in his face. A door opened up top. A door up top. And the top of the tower creaked open. Run upstairs. I'm going to back out through the kitchen and try to look at the hole in the side of the tower. So we'll get him if he's trying to escape. Yunk, would you join me for a slight stroll? I think I found the horse. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go with you, Mr. Montero. Sure. I'll face death first. You can follow. I thought we were just going for a stroll. We are. <laughs> a stroll but wouldn't it be exciting if we found the next chapter of life? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. I, I even Yonk is like this guy is sad. I just I just want to I just want to get to the next chapter of Jordal the Tortle. <laughs> Do we okay, how about uh you just stop talking and I'll record an outro. Oh, ooh, fuck you, kinda. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Thanks for listening to Freelance Heroism Plays Candle Keep Adventures. Uh, we hope you had just as much fun listening as we did playing. If you like what we do and you want to support us, uh, we have a Patreon. Start that one again. <laughs> if you... I can edit it so uh... that it comes together. Why don't you say it then? If you like listening, uh, consider supporting us on Patreon. Give us the money. What's our Patreon? Patreon.com forward slash freelance underscore heroism. Yes. You can go there and you can find character journals and sometimes character sketches, art, background stuff, and awesome poems that are funny and sometimes not. <laughs> you can check those out at any level. But if you donate at the producer tier, then we'll read your name at the uh, beginning of the episode. Every episode. <laughs> so you can get credit for being cool before cool is cool. You know, our cast for today's game was Yonk, 
as the uh, children's librarian. D'Angelo Montero as our gothic fiction librarian. And Detective Edgar Graves as our Constantine (laughs) demon hunter gritty 90s graphic novel film noir librarian. Yep. Okay. Sometimes what's got to be done has got to be done. And you got to do it. <laughs> um, if you like our podcast, uh, please rate it. Uh, we also have a Facebook. You can follow us there. And uh, some other stuff that's in the show notes. Check it out. It's down there. <laughs> Are you pointing? Yeah, it's under under the episode. Okay. Uh, all right. I guess we will uh, be back next week for chapter two of Candle Keepers. Well, you can't say chapter two for the next chapter. For the next chapter of Candle Keepers. Yeah. <laughs> this outro is going to be a disaster. <laughs> I'm going to be a couple it, episodes. I'm right? going to keep it all in. Who, who listens to the outro? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's super clean. <laughs> Man, I want to eat more pizza. I just want to drown myself in cheese. <laughs> I had pizza today. I had pizza for lunch. And then like an hour later, I was like, well, time to go to the gym. Oh, nice. <laughs> and then I got to the gym and I started lifting weights. And I kept burping and it would taste like <laughs> pizza. And I was like, oh, this is awful. It's so much better to just eat the pizza <laughs> and then not work out. Uh-huh. That's what I'm doing right now. See, see, you're working out and me pooping are the same thing. I don't think that's the same thing. It's the same thing. You're just getting rid of calories your way. I'm getting <laughs> rid of them my way. My way is a little more aggressive. <laughs> Yours is probably better for you. <laughs>